And here we are again, lesson three, righteousness by grace. We went over Romans 3, verse 21 through 23. <clears throat> I'll say it real quick just to say it, but I'm not going to delve into it too much. We're talking about, but now righteousness of God without the law. Anytime you see the word law, you can actually put works in there if you want. I did a uh, study for over 10 years. God took me on a study of grace, faith, works. Uh, those three words and um, 10 years. God really wanted me to get this stuff. Anyway, but now the righteousness of God without law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all who believe. For there's no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay. Now we're talking about righteousness. Now realizing God is holy. You know, I was teaching a Bible study just the other day and I was teaching on something. And, you know, this person, he just had to say, yeah, but we always, even though we're teaching this, we have to always teach that God is holy. And he's just, and, and he kept saying this, and I was like, absolutely, you got to teach on that. Matter of fact, that's what this is declaring. Just because you get saved by grace doesn't mean you're saying that God isn't righteous and holy. No, 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 no. It's absolutely the opposite. When you're teaching about the grace of God, you're talking about a holy and righteous God. He is just and the justifier of them that have faith in Jesus Christ. He is just. God is so just that he realizes you cannot come to him except on the ground of 100% denial of yourself and acceptance of 100% of what Jesus Christ has done for you. He realizes that you need a savior. Okay? So his holiness, it doesn't change. It's 100% always the same. He is holy, righteous, and just. So he wants to have children, right? Right? Well, guess what? Those children are going to have to be holy, righteous, and just. Does that mean they're going to be holy, righteous, and just in their actions? No. No. Not until we leave this earth will we be holy, righteous, and just in every single action we do. That's a whole other story when I teach on spirit, soul, and body. But what we're dealing about is the seed. We're dealing about who you are in the spiritual dimension, which is your spirit man, which is instantly saved when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that spirit man is 100%, 100% holy and righteous and just before God. Holy, pure. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've entered into the spiritual dimension. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. That spirit you have is one holy, pure spirit, 100%. Your spirit is willing, but your flesh has weaknesses. So how do we change the flesh? Well, the, what operates the flesh? Your soul. Here I am getting into spirit and soul and body and can't get away from it because it's such a dynamic truth. But I'll get into that later. We're actually doing it right now. It's called renewing the mind. You're taking off the old and putting on the new. Okay? You have to take off the old. There's no sense having a, a child with a poopy diaper and then instead of changing it and taking off the old, you just keep putting on a new one over the top. No, because the same stuff's still going to be there. You have to take off the old and put on the new. If you want a kid that smells good, if you want a mind that smells good, take off the old, put on the new. Trust me, it'll do. <laughs> okay, now we're talking about, again, God's holiness and righteousness. Let me just get this across. So someone would come to you and say, well, the only way that we're ever going to get to God is you've got to be pure and holy and righteous and just like God. I said, absolutely. That's 100% correct. Now we're getting it. But then you'd say, but nobody's ever been like that except Jesus. Keep going. Keep going. Follow that train of thought. No one's been pure, holy, righteous, just, just like God, because he is God, manifest in the flesh. No one can be that. 
But yet, to have fellowship with God, you've got to be like that. You need a righteousness, a holiness that equals God in order to be accepted by Him. How can you be accepted by God unless you have a holiness and a righteousness, a right standing, a justification, a just as if I'd never sinned, justified, just as if I'd never sinned, place with God. In other words, what did I say before? You need to see through God's eyes. What is God's eyes seeing? You can only find that out in the Word of God. So what is God's eyes seeing? He's seeing what Jesus Christ did, and he's seeing whether or not you accept it. If you accept what Jesus Christ did, then you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5, 21? Or 2 Corinthians? I don't know, I'm thinking of so many tangents right now. Ching! But the reality is this. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in other words, you have this position with God that needed to be absolutely just as holy and righteous and pure as God is to have a fellowship with him. He took himself in this lofty position and he took us on the earth in this lowly position of falling from the glory and the grace and the mercy of God falling down to our own uh, being our own gods and Jesus Christ came and he came in between the heavens and the earth and he was lifted up and he was on a cross and on that cross like a sponge he absorbed the sin of the world from Adam to the last person that's born on the earth he absorbed those sins, those shortcomings, failures, iniquities. He absorbed into himself on that cross everything that was against God and unholy and unrighteous. He absorbed and he absorbed the penalty for that so that we could be free. But just because he did that, and he already did it for the whole world, all the world's sin, past, present, and future sins, were already dealt with on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus took the penalty for that. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's what he was here for. The only problem is, you must believe in that to bring heaven and earth together in unity to bring God and you together to reconcile heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. Now, like I said, all the sin of the world has been dealt with. So some people would say, well, you don't even need to be born again then because everybody will be born again. And No, no. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Except you put your trust in Him, you will not receive Him. Those that receive, you need to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. If you do not receive the gift of righteousness, you do not possess the gift of righteousness. Therefore, your righteousness, which is as filthy rags, is what stands between you and God. How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to pay for the penalty of that since the penalty that was already paid you are not receiving? Jesus Christ paid for that penalty. If you don't receive his payment, who's going to pay? Will you pay? Or did Jesus already pay? So we needed a righteousness that equals God in order to be acceptable by him. But that's exactly what verse 21 and 22 is saying. But now the righteousness of God without the law of legalism, without the works of our flesh, without ourselves, without the law is manifested. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe or have faith or trust in what God said he did through his son Jesus Christ I'll get back with you with another teaching be blessed <laughs>